students uh, this is the fourth uh, video that is going to be uh, uploaded and it refers to the last part of the lesson the postmaster those of you who have got your text could please turn to page 8 page 8 I hope you have all listened to the three parts of the text that have been posted earlier now going to the last part we see the uh, the theme being discussed in detail the theme of loneliness and search for meaning in the world the theme of longing and separation is taken up again and discussed with the uh, departing of the school master of the sorry of the postmaster to his village and uh, the separation that causes a lot of pain to the little girl Ratan and the philosophical way in which the the postmaster tries to uh, console himself so this is what we see in the last part of the uh, of the story okay so let us discuss the postmaster resigned from his job as he was not able to adjust to the people who were working in the indigo factory and make friends with them secondly he missed his mother his sister this made him feel very lonely thirdly he was not able to find pleasure during his leisure time in nature he longed for the uh, the city life rather than this remote life in the village that attracted him more and then he falls sick Ratan nurses him back to good health but he doesn't want to continue working in this remote village in the post office and that is why he seeks a transfer when his application for a transfer is rejected he quits he resigns and leaves for his hometown or to the city to be with his mother sister and his place of birth he picks up his bag accompanied by a man who is carrying his trunk he gets into a boat and when he got in and the boat was underway and the rain swollen river like a stream of tears welling up from the earth swirled and swabbed at her bows then he felt a pain at heart the grief stricken face of a village girl seemed to represent for him the great unspoken prevailing grief of mother earth herself now when he is sitting on the boat and looking at the swollen river 
because we know it has been raining incessantly for days together the, the, the there is floods everywhere the river is swollen overflowing he can uh, see or feel that the river is also crying water is coming out of mother earth's tears streams of tears welling up from the earth swelled and swabbed at her bows he can feel as if the earth herself mother earth was weeping and at that time in his silent contemplation of looking at the nature around him he realizes that he too is sad he feels a pain in his heart the pain for the first time he feels the pain of leaving this little girl alone he feels sorry for her he feels sad for her okay and he remembers or he sees the grief the sorrow stricken face of a village girl he sees her sad face the tears in her eyes the loneliness she was feeling he can experience that he sees a grief stricken face and the girl seemed to represent for him the great unspoken pervading grief of mother earth herself he 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 felt as if the mother earth herself was crying through this rain the swollen river the streams flowing into the river everywhere there was water and he felt that mother earth herself was crying at one time sitting there in the boat he had an impulse to go back he felt like rushing back to this girl leave everything back there go back to the village and bring away along with him that lonesome lonely sad the girl who has no one in this world waif waif is a thin small pale girl grief stricken girl she is small she is helpless she is homeless the waif poor girl and so he thinks she has asked him can i go with you and he had laughed at her idea and now he thinks what if i take her home with me she is she has no one in this world forsaken of the world nobody cares for her but the wind had just filled the sails the boat had got well into the middle of the turbulent current and already the village was left behind and its outlying burning ground came in but when these thoughts come maybe i can go and bring this girl with me take her to the town the boat had already set her sails she was in the middle of the river of the turbulent current she was caught in the in the flowing of the river the bird ha- the boat had picked up speed and the village was already far away he could only see the burning out the dying out landscape of the village he could he couldn't he was quite far away from the village and there was no going back now even though very late he realized that he was leaving behind a 
forsaken girl a waif of a girl and he felt sorry for her he realizes how much she had cared for him the concern that she had for him when he was uh on his sick bed so the traveler born on the breast of the swift flowing river consoled himself he was feeling sad but he had to console himself he had to bring himself back to reality he had to accept the reality and how does he accept the reality by uh using an element of philosophy what is that element of philosophy that he uses to control himself with phil- he consoled himself with philosophical reflections on the numerous meetings and partings going on in the world he says or he tells himself parting and meeting are a part of life so you meet so many people in your lives and you become friends with them your school days your college days you 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 try to remember how many people you have met how many people you have become friends with and the sadness that you felt the grief that you felt when they departed when they went away to another school to another college or you had to leave your hometown your parents you will realize that grief and that was the grief which the master postmaster was feeling but he consoles himself making use of some philosophical element and he says meeting and parting are a part of life we have to accept that people come and go in our life and there is a great parting what is the greatest parting he philosophers of on uh, on 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 death and he says death is the greatest parting from which none return so we can't go back to the people or bring back the people from the dead they are gone forever but even when death separates us slowly we settle with the passage of time we accept death we accept the person is no more and we learn to live with the people who have left this world so he says this is the philosophy of life meeting and parting we need not take it very seriously with the passage of time i will get adjusted i will forget ratan but for ratan she was made of a different stuff the postmaster was philosophical but there was no philosoph- philosophy for ratan she was wandering about the post office in a flood of tears every part of the post office the wall the ground the place everything held a sweet memory for her and in her sorrow like a a woman who had lost her balance mental balance she was running around wandering what is wandering going here and there without aim not doing anything she was wandering around the post office in a flood of tears with tears in her eyes she could not control her grief and just like the incessant rain the flowing streams tears were flowing down her 
eyes flowing down her cheeks. It may be that she had a lurking hope in some corner of her heart that a dada would return and that is why she would not tear herself away. It may be that she still had a lurking, a small, continuous hope. My dada will not leave me. He will definitely come to take me. She loved him so much. She cared for him so much. And she, she thought that he too would reciprocate her love. And definitely, just as she was finding it difficult to live without him, he too would find it difficult to live without her and he would just come back and take her to his home. That was the hope that she had in the corner of her heart. So, as human beings, all of us live because we have hope that tomorrow will be better than today. And what was her hope? That her dada would come back. And that is why she could not tear herself. She could not take herself away from the post office. What if he comes back when I am not here? What if he doesn't find me when he returns? And that is why she goes round and round the post office. She wanders around the post office doing nothing thinking only that with that hope that the dada will come back to take her the dictates of reason take a long time to assert their own sway sorry alas for a foolish human nature its fond mistakes are persistent we are foolish human beings this is a common human folly we do not lose hope at all we think that something better will come here foolishly ratan believes or hopes that the postmaster will come back reason is lost hope gains an upper hand and the she is unable to think properly to reason out and say that he will not come back she still believes that he will return and this is a lost hope but she still clings on to that lost hope. She hopes against hope that he will definitely come back and she will uh, not be separated from him. She longs for him to return but reason tells her that he will not return but she is not, not ready to listen to reason. The surest proofs, meanwhile, are disbelieved. He is gone. The bag is not there. Uh, the house is empty. No trace of the schoolmaster. This is the reality. But she does not believe that he has left. False hope is clung to with one's might and main till a day comes when it has sucked the heart dry and it forcibly breaks through its bonds and departs. After that comes the misery of awakening and then once again the longing to get back to the maze of the same mistakes. The surest proofs meanwhile are disbelieved. False hope is clung to with one's might and main. So what is happening? Tagore here says that human beings fall into hope hope than seeing the reason disappointment becomes hard to handle but we cling on to that disappointments in our lives because that bond which we build with uh, with someone whom we love 
is difficult to break. We cannot handle disappointments in our lives. We cannot handle failure in our lives. And that is why we keep on sticking to hope. And moreover, the tragedy here is that Ratan loves her schoolmaster in a very innocent manner, in a very selfless way. And she thinks that the schoolmaster will provide her shelter. But the schoolmaster has got, the, I'm sorry, the postmaster has got his own limitations. Society will not allow him to just uh, take this girl and go back to the city. People will not accept it. He is caught in a very helpless situation where he is unable to help Ratan. And that is why he tries to come out of it through reasoning. Through philosophy and says parting and departing are a way of life. We have to settle down. We meet so many people. Death takes people away from us. But for Ratan, it is, she cannot, there is no philosophy. For her, it is only hope. And when hope does not transform, translate into reality, what happens? After that comes the misery of awakening and then once again the longing to get back into the maze of the same mistakes. We do not come out of our mistakes. Still we hope against hope and Ratan is left desolate and sad by the schoolmaster. He will never come to take her back but she keeps on hoping and this makes her future life tragic so that is the end of the lesson students you can <clears throat> now concentrate on writing answers to short questions um, if you turn to page 11 in your textbooks uh, you have short questions there but uh, you can just uh, answer the first question in what way was the condition of Ratan very pitiable that is for five marks and uh, for ten marks <coughs> you have Section B there, answer the following question in about 300 to 350 words each. <coughs> so you can, <coughs> sorry, so you can answer the first question, trace the development in the relationship between the postmaster and Ratan. Fine students, this is what you have to learn from the first lesson the poster master thank you